Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So today I'm going to talk about another preview feature, which is the command bar editor. And I kind of feel like this is something that was missing for a long time, right? We did not have any out of the box tools that came with the application for us to make changes to the command bar or previously known as the ribbon. If you had to make any changes, most of us probably use Scott DeRose tool that he invented, which is Ribbon Workbench, which is part of the XRM toolbox. So go ahead, sit right back, and I hope you enjoy this video. You can access the command bar designer from the new modern app designer. And if you're not familiar with the new Power Apps designer, I'm actually going to drop a link to a video that I did about the new Power Apps designer uh, in the section below in the video. So you can take a look at that if you want to as well. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go to make.powerapps.com and then obviously you need to make sure that you have the correct environment open, right? You can see that right over here. This is where you can change the environment. Then you're going to go to apps. And then from here, you're going to pick the app for which you want to edit that command bar. So I'm going to go here to my sales hub to access the power apps editor or modern app designer, you're going to click here on edit in preview. So as soon as you click on this or you hover over this little arrow here, you're going to see this edit in preview and you're going to click that and that's going to load that new modern app designer. I'm going to give it a second here for everything to load. And here we go. So in order to access the ribbon designer, or I keep saying ribbon, but obviously it's called the command bar, you're going to click on any, or you're going to hover, I should say, on any of these tables, because those represent the tables for which you want to edit that command bar. So in this example, I'm actually going to add a copy button that's going to allow me to make a copy of an existing account record by simply clicking that new button that I'm going to add. So I'm going to click here on the ellipse and then here, this is where you can see that it says edit command bar preview. So this is where I'm going to access that command bar designer. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to bring up that window. So as you can see here, it's asking me now, let me actually make this a little bit larger. It's asking me now, okay, do, so which command bar do you want to edit? Either the main grid, which is the command bar uh, for the list view of records. So if I would navigate to accounts on my sitemap, right? Let me just minimize this. If I click here on accounts, I should actually do that over here. If I click here on accounts, this is that command bar that it's referring to. And then you also see main form. Obviously that's the command bar on the account form. Then we have here subgrid view. So these views, right? We all know what subgrids are. And if you don't, well, these are the views that are displayed on forms of other tables. So for example, if I would open the account form, you can actually see the contacts subgrid view on there, right? I don't have my a subgrid view of any accounts currently on there. I could have the one for sub accounts. So that's what that's talking about. And then obviously we have the associated view. So this command bar is shown on the form of a parental table and that's going to show related data. So for example, if I'm going to open up a record here and then I'm going to click here on relate it, 
and I can pick any of this, right? I can pick whatever that might be. I can do quotes, orders, whatever. Let's click on orders. This is that associated view that I'm talking about. So those are all the different commands bar, command bars that you can edit. So let's go back here. I'm actually going to do the, let's see here, the main grid. So I'm going to click on edit. And that's now going to pull up the command bar for that main grid. So as you can see, these are a bunch of existing buttons already that we can't really touch right now. I'm hoping this is going to come later where we can decide whether or not we want to hide or show those buttons or, or do other things that we might uh, want to do here. But currently this is really all that we can do. Now you can see that I already created a copy button. So let me walk you through that. So in order to create a new button, all you have to do is just click here on new. And then what you need to do is you're going to give it a new name, right? So I named this copy. Let's do this again and let me just call this clone. And then if you scroll down, you can see you have the ability to choose not to use an icon to use an icon, which allows you to pick any of the icons from here. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my clone. Here we go. There's already an icon for that. So that's what I'm going to use. But you could also use a web resource for that. And then you have to upload a, what was it, SVG file so that you can use that as an icon. Then you can put a tooltip title in there and a description. So I'm going to say clone a clone an account used to make a copy of an existing account. So this is really what the users will see right when they hover over that button. Then you have accessibility text and the accessibility I'm going to leave that actually blank, but the accessibility text, if you're interested what this is, um, I actually looked it up and it says this is what will be read by screen readers, right? So if you're using that, that's what is going to, to show for that. Then the order number, this is obviously the order of the button. Um, I'm going to just leave it here. And then here you can see there's a hide option on here as well. Now I'm going to get back to my action here because that's where we're going to enter what we want the formula to do or what we want to happen when the user clicks on that button. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to configure the visibility for this button. And in this particular case, I only want it to show on a certain condition. So you can see it's set to always show, but I'm going to say I want to show the button on a particular condition and I only want it to show if one item is selected. So I'm going to say I'm going to do a count rows here and right. So I'm going to count the records that are selected. So I'm going to say self, and then select it and then all items. So I want it to count that and I want that to equal one. If it doesn't equal one, then I do not want that button to be visible. So that's all you have to do here. And like I said, now it's only show the button if one account is selected. Now let's talk about the action, right? So what is going to happen when users are going to click this button? So I'm going to again, click on open formula bar and you can see here that this now says on select earlier when I was in visibility, right? This is different. This now shows when should it be visible? So let's go back here to my action and I'm going to start here with a patch. And I'm going to patch accounts, right? We said that we would want to use this to duplicate an existing account. So I'm going to put here defaults and those are going to be accounts. And I'm going to close that bracket and do a comma. And then I'm going to do a space and a curly bracket. So 
What I'm going to do now, I already identified the table, right, which is accounts. So now I'm going to populate the fields in that row or in that record, right? So the first field I want to populate is accounts name. And I would really recommend typing this out because if some of these fields are renamed, you're going to see a different thing, a different title, right? So my the account name, oops, I have two of these. I didn't want that. The account name is going to be self, right? Whatever is selected. So the account record that is selected, I'm going to say item. There you go. And then I'm going to do a dot. And then again, I'm going to do as you can see here account name right so i'm gonna for the account name in the new record i'm gonna use the account name of the selected item but what i want to do is i actually want to add some text to that so i'm going to do an and sign and then i'm going to do i'm going to type something in here i'm going to say dash space copy and again i'm going to do these quotes here. So I did, as you can see, right, the self-selected account name and then the end sign. And then I did a space and a quote and then a space. Let's do a space here, right? So this is the additional text that's going to be added to the account name. Okay. Let's populate some other fields as well. I'm going to do a comma and then I'm going to populate another field. Let's do main phone. So I'm going to scroll. I can also start typing, obviously, right? Main phone. So for the main phone field, again, I want to do the self dot selected dot item, right? And I'm going to do another dot. And then again, I want to use the main phone from the selected account record. And then you can add on to that, right? So I'm going to do another comma. Let's do city as well. I'm going to say city, address one city. So in that field, I want to do again, self dot selected and then dot item dot. And then again, oh, let's just select it. Oops, item dot, what did we say? City. And so you can continue on obviously like this, right? So when you're done with populating those fields, you're going to do a closing curly bracket, and then you're going to close this with the regular bracket. And then I'm going to do semicolon. And then I want to also send a notification to let the user know that a copy was made. So you, I'm going to do notify. Here we go. Notify. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this bracket. And then I'm going to put in there what I want that notification to show. So I'm going to say a copy named new space. And again, I'm going to do these a quote. And now I'm going to do the end sign because I want to grab the name, right, of that newly created account. So I'm going to do self, oops, self, self dot selected right because it's going to be the same name item and then i'm going to do a dot and the account account oops i cannot type today account name right that's what we did and then again i'm going to do a space and and sign i'm going to do a quote and we did space dash copy. So that's going to be the name. Comma has been created dot. Please open the record and update any additional fields. And then I'm going to do ending quotes and I'm going to close that with a bracket. So this is what that looks like when you're done with that. And all you have to do from here is then you're going to go ahead and save and publish that. So let's just hit save and publish. Just give it a second here. All right. So it is finished with the publishing. So now let's take a look at 
what my new ribbon looks like in my sales hub. So I'm going to click here on play and that's going to launch my sales hub. Sometimes you might need to refresh again if you don't see your button immediately. So let's hope it's going to be here. I'm going to click here on accounts and okay. So you can see here that uh, if I don't have anything selected, I don't see my new button on the command bar. Let's go here to Adventure Works or Blue Yonder Airlines. Now I have one selected and now you can see that my button is available. If I select two, it's gone again, right? Because we, that's how we configured it to only have one account selected. All right, so now let's go ahead and click on that button. Before we do that, you can see here that it shows me those screen tips, right? The actual description on the bottom and on top here, it says clone an account. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And here we go. Here is my notification, a uh, copy named, oh, it says name. So I need to update that named blue yonder airlines has been created. Please open the record and update any additional fields. Now I don't have the ability to put the URL in there. Unfortunately, hopefully that's something that's going to come later, but that's not available as of yet. But I do see here my record that has just been copied over by clicking that button. Thanks so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. See you next week.